tech for learning is the key. Enjoying the fun, sharing your smile, and tech to stay, stay a while. Hi, everyone, and welcome to EdTech Tuesdays. Today, we're going to be talking about boosting your students' reading fluency, unleashing the power of reading progress. If you have not learned about reading progress, this is an amazing tool that is going to help you provide those reading fluency passages in a digital way, and your students will be able to read them and get information. You will get information from them as into their accuracy, their words per minute, you're going to be getting as well the recordings of them doing it so you can listen to them as, uh, of everything that is happening while they're recording. Now, just some housekeeping rules. Make sure that you keep your mic muted. Please feel free to type any questions in the chat. Myself and Debbie Pingle will be here to read those questions and answer them. If you have not registered to the PD system, please do so by going to the PD system and use session 339485. Also, Debbie, share the link on it so that way you can just click and register you uh, check in code PSJ tech on the PD system to check in right now we will be using uh, our near pod because we will be having a, a time to climb at the end of the session so make sure that you also log into the near pod with code RDSEI the link has also been shared by Debbie and she will share one more time so you can just click and join so Microsoft Reading Progress and Reading Coach. It's a free tool that we use in Microsoft Teams and all teachers should have their classrooms already created in Microsoft Teams. It's designed to support you as an educator with students' fluency in reading. You can also add a component for comprehension. And for those elementary teachers that are here, think about those reading passages that you already have on P um, PDF from Savas. And we actually downloaded them for you and I'm gonna share that link so you can just grab them. And we have ready all the way from first grade to fifth grade in English and in Spanish. And the reason that we want to share all five grade levels with you is that if you have students that are a lower level or an above level than your grade level, you can share the passages from the other grade levels. Now for kinder, we also recommend you using it. And you can put uh, frequency words in there and they will listen to the frequency words pronunciation as well as those fluency sentences. We know that they're starting to read in kinder. So we encourage you to use sentences where the students can read them and you can get feedback. As, uh, think about it as a center for them to go in and do it themselves. It will save you time to listening and grading. We'll show you how the AI does it. And it will also provide actionable time timely data that is exported into Excel and you can share with your principals and then you can export it also as an artifact for your t-test. There's a lot of insightful information that you will be getting from your students learning. So what levels do you think we recommend for this? It's suitable for all levels, elementary through high school. So for elementary, start with kinder, first, second, when they're still trying or they're still learning to read. Of course, when we go third through fifth, we, now we're saying that the students are reading to learn but we still have struggler readers all the way through high school. You can use this tool to use those fifth grade students that are still having trouble with their fluency and their pronunciation 
and it will help them, it will coach them. The, uh, the foundational skills, grade one through three, it will help you also with your ELLs, your English language learners at all grade levels, struggling readers, and use it as an intervention program. So this is how it looks. You will access through Microsoft Teams. You will create an assignment in your class. And I'm going to go step by step on how to create it live after I go through the slides. The importance of setting up your classroom in Teams is it's already there. If this is the first time you've created or used your classroom in Teams, you do have to accept it so your students can see it. It doesn't matter that your students have Chromebooks or iPads. They're able to access your assignments through the Teams app on the iPad or through a link and it will be a web-based browser Teams for them to access it. So as you create the assignment, you will navigate to the assignment tabs on Teams. You will select Create and then Assignment and then attach a reading progress passage. Now, there are several ways to create passages. You can create one from scratch with AI generated in Teams. You can use some of the pa uh, simple, library, sample library that is by ReadWorks or you can upload a Word or a PDF including those Savas passages that are already done by you by the curriculum. So how do we prepare this? This is the student's look or how it will look for your student's end. They, they, they will see the passage. They will click on that blue, bo uh, blue book that is two different tones of blue. That is the reading progress. I'm going to show you again how it will look, but then they will see their screen so you can, they can see how they're recorded and you will click start. It will give you how many minutes to read and they will put the student's passage so they can read it. Now the students have availability to change the color of the background, change the color of the uh, font and increase the spacing and the type of font. This will allow them if they have any need or supports for them to read easily and not have a back, uh, black background or a white background, they can change it to different colors. As an educator, when you review, this is Sinaida's daughter, and uh, she did some, we made, gave him some homework a couple of years ago for, for us to get uh, recording and how it looks uh, after the student recorded. So you can see some of the information in here, and I'll show it live as well. But after, this is what it will look as a teacher when you see the students' responses. You're able to access your students' submissions. You can see the metrics on words per minute, accuracy, omissions, repetitions, insertion, mispronunciations. Also, it will give you the words that they practice under the coach part. And in the left side under the video, you can see that you can auto-detect in this area over here what it means to auto-detect is that we're using the AI to auto-detect the omissions, insertions, or repetitions. You can switch the level of AI interaction or auto-detection or turn it off if you don't want the AI to do it, but you can listen and watch the video and mark them for, for, uh, for yourselves. So once you do the review process, you can go into insights and see not only per student, but also glad class level information. You can see the challenging words for all of your students as a class. You can see as a class of words per minute average, or you can get all this information also per student. Additionally, like I said, you can export this into an Excel spreadsheet and get that information provided to you. Maybe your CLO wants to know that, your principal, your AP, or since you're using this tool, you're using technology in a way that is going to help your students with their fluency. You can do that for a teeth test um, artifact. This is what it looks like in the reading progress for review. It gives you the words per minute. It gives you the accuracy, the mispronunciation, the omissions, the insertions, and this will be throughout. This is the assignment title and it's for one student and it gives you the date and the time that it was recorded by the student. It provides targeted support and you can also celebrate the growth with, with your student. They will get a reaction just by submit it. There will be like a little tiny celebration in Teams, but you can also provide that celebration when you can see that their accuracy is getting better. Their uh, mispronunciations are getting better because they're getting that support from the reading coach part of the reading progress. So now let's do and go live together on Teams. Now I'm gonna have to open up my Teams and I'm going to bring it over so you guys can see it. 
Debbie, can you see my screen? I just want to make sure that everybody can see it. Yes. Perfect. So I am going to go to the Instructional Technology Department class. That's one of, actually, no, I have another one that was hidden. Let me see this archived. I'm going to unarchive this one. Perfect. So that way I can see it in here. And then I can go into some of the assignments. So one of the things that I'm going to show you first is how to do an assignment. You will go into your team. So once you go into Teams, you will see your classroom right here under Classes. If you do not have a classroom, that means that you're not a classroom teacher. If you're a CLL or if you have a, or a resource teacher or um, a reading interventionist, uh, we can help you and support you in creating a class for students that you see. But if you have a class already, you will just click on the class and you will see these, this menu on the left. You will go into assignment. Once you get into assignment, but I don't see an assignment ready. Let me see. Let me go back to class teams. And it doesn't let me create an assignment in here. Huh. Maybe because it was archive. I'm gonna grab this class for right now. I'm going to go into assignments and you will see the create button at the bottom left. So you will create and then you will go into learning accelerators. Now we're not telling you to go away from Google Classroom. We just want you to use this tool of Teams, which is a Teams classroom, to be able to use these reading accelerators. Right now there are three of them, reading progress, search progress, and speaker progress. Now, we're only going to be talking about reading progress, but if you're interested in learning more about the other two, contact us. We'll be more than happy to support you. And there's one coming that is math progress coming soon. Should have already started, but Microsoft have not released it yet. As you can see, there are three ways to create those passages. Import the Word or PDF, generate a reading passage with AI, or browse the sample library. Now, if you browse a sample library, it's only in English and it's from ReadWorks and you don't have to do anything from it. It will just be, you will select the grade level that will be intended and you will select the passage that is there. Now, the generating reading passage with AI is a lot of fun and it's very similar to the web version of Reading Coach. If we didn't have Teams or Microsoft in our district, there's a free version of Reading Coach that is web-based. But this one is really cool because you can create any topic. You select the topic that you want, select the age of your students, how many words do you want in that passage, and the language that you want it to generate. Now, AI can also generate it in Spanish, and it will create it for you. But for sake of what the passages that we have, I'm going to import the Word or PDF from uploading it from my device. Now, I do have some of them already here, and I will be sharing again, like I said, the um, the, pa the passages, they're on my Google Drive, and I will give you that um, link soon. Let me see where I have it. Doo -doo -doo. It is, doo -doo -doo. I have it here on Saba. So let me see, for training. Reading progress resources, Sabbath's fluency. So I'm just going to grab, this is great one, call reads. And then the ones that says SP, because I'm going to be sharing that link with you, remember, that's the Spanish. Now, the, it will go grade 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So I'm going to grab, and let's do second grade in Spanish. Now, let me do English. It uploads the PDF. Oh, that's, that's a whole PDF. So that's going to be a little crazy. I'm going to actually cancel that. And I'm going to open the actual PDF and just copy and paste it into a Word document. And that will be even better for you all to understand that way. So as I go and I open the PDF, we go in here. And I'm going to open, I said second grade in English. I open the PDF, 
And my suggestion when you're grabbing this, it will be a lot easier for you to copy and paste it into a Word document. And what I tell you why is because you will have to separate the PDFs into individual pages to upload them into Reading Progress. But if you go into a passage, for example, let's say breakfast in bed, we can just grab the passages up to here. It will not grab the numbers on the right that we usually use them when we're listening to the students one-to-one, -one, but you're not going to need it anymore. And if you upload everything to the PDF, then you will have to edit and remove all these. Since I'm just copying and pasting, I'm going to copy the text, as you see that I did here. I'm going to grab a new Word document, and I'm going to paste it. And it gives me the whole passage that I just put. So I'm just going to save it into my download so it will be easy to upload into this PC. But I do want to remember the title breakfast in bed. So I'm just going to paste it here and save it. As simple as that, I'm going to close it. I'm going to go back here. Remember, learning accelerators, reading progress, because I edited and deleted and I'm starting again. I'm going to import it from this device and I'm going to go into my downloads and the last one that I created, it, it's not there. I don't know where I saved it. Let me open it again to make sure where I saved it. Oh, I didn't select downloads. That's what it was. There we go. Now it's done the way I wanted it. So it's here and I'm going to upload it. So now I recognize everything in here and it gives you how many words it has that passage, the language that it's in, and then if you know the reading language level, you can put it in there, but we know that this is probably um, fiction. And then how many minutes do you want to give them the time limit? Now, if you're actually just assessing for a minute, you can put a minute. If you want to give them 10 minutes, you can give them 10 minutes. But it's up to you how you decide. If you just want to give them one minute, you can. If you want to give them 10 minutes, that's fine. Opt-in cutoff feature. So if you think that you should be able to read 187 minutes, 107 words in one minute, do so. If not, change it to whatever you feel like it. The pronunciation sensitivity. This is how the AI is going to listen to the students um, and grade them their accuracy and their word pronunciation. So if you want to put it in default, remember we can change it later. Now this is the comprehension piece that I was telling you. You can turn it on and add questions for them to do comprehension. And if you don't know what questions to ask, after the passage, there are two uh, multiple choice, one open-ended, actually there were three multiple choice questions in there. And you can just add those three multiple choices to make sure to see if the students understood the reading and com comprehend it. I'm not going to put it right here for right now, but you can for you, for your students. Now, this is, again, how it will look for the student. I'm not able to show my, my screen right now because I'm using my, my camera on this video right now. And then they will click Start. Now, it will go here. I'm going to go Next. And it's going to take me here. Now, remember, you do have to add a title, and I'm going to put the same title as if it was given, Breakfast in Bed. One of the key things that you want to know is when are you assigning this lesson, and when is this lesson due? So let's say that I want this for my teachers or for my students to turn it in today before class ends. So let's say it will be done today by 5 p.m., this will go into this class, all current students. I'm going to change now. And then you can put how many points. So if you want to use this for a grade, you can put one point, ten points, however you want to do it. I'm going to keep it in no points in there. And in here at the bottom, let's say that you want to use the same passage for multiple days of the week. You can duplicate this assignment 
and then you can schedule or assign it in the future. Right now, I'm going to assign it now, and all our CATs are going to get another assignment on this, but I'm just going to show you. It's created here. It's due tomorrow by 5 p.m., and if you want to use the same passage, you can duplicate it, but when you assign it, assign it for the future. This will give you their progress on the same passage. Let's say if you want to do that Monday through Thursday every day for a minute when they come back in and it will be just like a warm up. Welcome. Let's do this. You can do that for your students Monday through Thursday and then you can change the cold read to something different on Friday. Now, this is uh, it was assigned to the students. And if you go here, you can also see the student view again. They will click in here. They will see breakfast in bed. I cannot start it because I'm using my video, but I will change into Teams and show you an assignment that we created, the one that um, Sonetta's daughter did for us last year. And if we go into Assignments, you can go into Returned Items or Ready to Grade. That will be where the assignment is there or past due because some of them have not finished. And I believe the one that she read was called A Baby Polar Bear Grows Up. So if you go here, you can see that the ones that were returned are the ones that were completed. Now, Riley returned this one, and I really like her example because she did a really good job. And this is how you see as a, as a teacher. You can see the recording, and you can listen to it. You can see the accuracy rate in here, the correct words per minute, the omissions, the insertions, and the repetitions, and how many words they practice. Um, in here, it tells you that she inserted the ones in teal. So these two words were not originally in the passage. And then she repeated these bears and bears. And then she omitted soon and in. Um, and then she inserted baby and omitted baby. So she said a baby polar bear instead of a polar bear baby. And you can listen to it uh, by clicking here, or just start with A, and you can jump into the word. A baby polar bear is a cub. A cub is born with its eyes closed. It is so it should have been a polar bear baby. And you can listen that there was an omission and an insertion. Um, it gives you all this information. And in the practice words, you can see how she did and the words that she was coached by and the tools that she used. So she attempted to say closed and live and how in, uh, in, until she got it correctly. <clears throat> now you can report, you return the full report with a student. You can get the noise suppression in the background on and off. Like let's say that you have a lot of students working on it. If you put the background noise suppression, it will help the AI to do it. And like I said, you can low medium or high even though you had selected already as a default you can take off the auto select and you can go and listen to it and actually go in here and click and mark yourself what the words were missing or mispronounced another thing that will be really good to see is if you go back into your class and you go to insights You go into reading, and then you see what were the challenging words for the whole class. What were some of the assignments that you have here for them? You can also generate a new passage based on these. This is new. It's generating a new passage using AI based on the challenging words that they had. It gives you average words per minute by the assignments and accuracy rate by the assignments. It also gives you the most challenging phonic rules. Now for Spanish, this is not going to be uh, there, but you can also use the Spanish um, fluency and create the Spanish fluency with AI. But for English, you can select the rules that they will be more having most trouble with, and it will create a challenge assignment with words that have that phonic rule. And then it gives you here some of the students' information. So let's say student ES, you can go here and view the report. This is just by the student itself and how they did in the assignments that it was given to them automatically. 
So this is reading progress. I'm going to go back in. And if there's any questions which I don't see any right now, I'm going to continue on and provide you this links. So these are some of the benefits of using this tool with your students. Personalized reading practice, get immediate feedback uh, to your students by using the reading coach where we'll use the five most challenging words that the students have and it will provide them either a visual or um, syllabication for that word so it's easier than for them to pronounce. Also, it can provide a sound out so that the program, the coach will say it so they can repeat it. It's self-paced re learning so you will provide it to your students and they do it on their own. It builds confidence for them on the reading aloud and it develops the awardment through the video playback. The students can watch the video, can see their mistakes after you return it to them. So some uh, of tools for uh, successful implementation is that start with simple passages. Get idea of what your students level are and where they're at. Regularly review and provide feedbacks for the students and they can see also their, their growth themselves in teams. Encourage the using of this reading coach and if you like it, Tell other teachers in your classroom. This is a free tool that is going to help your students to get better reading, better at reading and practice not only for STAR, but if you have ELs that uh, tell us, this is going to be helping them a lot because they're pronouncing, they're speaking out loud, they're listening, and they're seeing how they can better themselves. You can use that information to provide intervention and instruction. And here, if you're already in... Um, Nearpod, you can click on the Savas Fluency and it will give you access to all those Savas readings. So I'm just going to give you right here. Boom, boom, boom. And this is that link to the Savas Fluency. But like I said again, I do need you to log in into this Nearpod. So now, boom, 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 we're going to go into our time to climb. So make sure everybody's logging in. We're going to be doing a beach theme because I love the beaches. And we are going to start. There's five questions. Let's see who's connected and let's see who's going to win our door prize. I have Maricela Romero. I have Noelia Guterres. Let's see who else wants to join in and to the fun and who paid attention. Who? I have five. All right, I have six. I'm missing two more people, but I'm going to start the game. One, two, and three. What are the primary benefits of using Microsoft Reading Progress for educators? Very good, four of you got the answer correct. Other two, in, you can still log in. Question number two, here it comes. Which of the following is not mentioned as a recommended use for reading progress? Just to let you know, I grabbed my slides, uploaded them to Magic School, and created this question it's like that. Very good. Five out of six. That's question three. How can educators All right, time is up. Each person inside tabs in Microsoft Teams. Question four. What features does Reading Coach provide to students? Four. 
one more. All right, and it's Andy back on the game. And lastly, let's go. Which of the following is recommended for successful implementation of reading progress? Very good. Gradually increasing passage difficulty over time. Start with something simple, and then. Eva Hernandez, congratulations! You won our door prize and we will be sending it to you this week. Congratulations, Ms. Hernandez. Again, some more resources and support. We give you the seven fluency passages again in here on the last slide. Getting started with Microsoft Reading Progress, some information, pairing reading progress assignments with Coach, some of the recordings that we had from last year, and how to use Reading Progress and Reading uh, Coach through Teams. Again, thank you for joining us today. It is 5 o'clock. This is our YouTube channel, our Instructional Technology website. And in our YouTube channel, you can see all of our training recordings that we have done last year, the year before, and now this year. And if you please take a few moments to fill out the care survey and tell us how we did. Thank you so much for being here.